that werewolf morning, woke up with a rum hangover, imagined blood on the walls, and prayed to God it was mine. Tomlinson, 10,000 Islands, Randy Wayne White. Joel Woods. Hey. How okay. you doing? Great, man. What's going on? Uh, you know, living the dream. I haven't seen you in many moons. It's been a while, man. It's been... Well, last time I saw you was that Winter Classic, um, and it was got it had to have been 2013? I think so. 12 or 13. Do you have yes. it in January? Did you have it in January? Always the first Saturday in February. So, yeah, it would have been 2013, because yeah. we just would have opened up Blind Dog back then. And, uh, yeah, it's been forever. What's going on? What are you doing now? Right now, I'm a bit of a sabbatical. I'm actually a stay-at-home dad. Nice. It's my full-time gig. Uh, four little kids, um, three at home, one in kindergarten, and uh, that now that's that's the number one priority. Three at home and one in kindergarten. Yeah. So we have four little guys. So it's <sighs> tough to give that job to somebody else with four yeah, kids. Yeah, really? So. Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't. I had no idea you had four of them. Wow. Yeah, we got four. All this gray hair, man. It's, yeah. You know, it's, geez. So we met in college, actually, when I was uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And then I didn't see you again probably for, I don't know, 10 years. Until the Winter Classic, yeah, probably. Yeah, until 2013, at least. Yeah. It was at least 10 years. But um, So you were you were at, uh, you own CrossFit Independence, right? Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that, and what happened with that? What was what, what, what did you decide to do with that? Well, you know, starting the business, um, gave it five years going into it, and it had some, some goals that it needed to meet for... Our family and, and four kids, like work and, and family balance was important and financial goals and and uh, five years came up and we just weren't really where we, where we needed to be in the expanding family. It was really it was a struggle to balance and right. to, to do it right. right. You know, wanted to run the gym right and it was just really hard to do that and have a yeah have a family at home and uh, it just got to be too much. Yeah, it's kind of hard to drag all the kids there every day and put in that kind of time and like you said if you have to have somebody else watching them you're right that's a lot of time and a lot of money or a lot of time you're losing and a lot of money as yeah. well and you'll get that time back and and you know the financial and you know the, the fitness industry they're more entrepreneurial so it just made more sense for for me to be the one to yeah to do that job for now than, right what does your wife do she works for human resources for a fa- her family company oh, okay. they have a big excavating company Nice. How'd you get into CrossFit to begin with? You know what? Um, So personal trainer, five seasons, you know, and uh, I was introduced to to, to, to Bingo. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Dale White, he was, uh, you know, imagine five seasons at Country Club, Mm -hmm. 2000. It's like in Westlake, right? Right In Westlake. It's like 2008, and just 40, 50-year-old guy with like a do-rag on, like, Running sprints around this tiny little track and 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 deadlifting and like what the heck is like this guy doing? Like, right. People aren't doing that at five seasons, right. you know. And yeah. always, you know, loved um, the Olympic lifts and, and sprinting and you know that, and to see somebody doing that. Bingo was a neat. was a was a really interesting character, man, because oh, he was sure. like an OG CrossFit oh, OG. guy, right? Like him and Glassman are go way back. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they're tight. And uh, his sons owned well, it was CrossFit Comet. Comic CrossFit, and then it became CrossFit Bingo, and right. they moved into a bigger building. And um, but I think his sons went on to like his son's like a lawyer now. One's one? a lawyer, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, and I, and then the I think the other one went to college too, but I'm not sure so, for what. But yeah, I don't uh, know exactly, but yeah, they and then so they closed that down. But um, yeah, he was an interesting character. But go ahead. So, so that was the first bite, you know. Then it yeah. started going on, you know, CrossFit.com, and his first video was like five hot girls like in a parking lot doing overhead squats right. and muscle ups i'm like what that's just cool yeah you know what i mean i love that kind of garage gym minimalists yeah. could get into that and i think anybody who's a personal trainer that has dreams of owning their own gym that's yeah. the first time like, Ooh, i could i could own my own gym yeah really crossfit you makes know? it very easy to open your own place you know it, it the model of uh, like the Planet Fitness, where you have to come up with three hundred thousand dollars just to start up, plus marketing, plus and marketing. All that. Yeah, right. I mean that's that's tough. That's a tough pill to swallow. But CrossFit makes it is is you know as expensive as CrossFit is. It's nowhere near the expense you would put into a Globo gym if you wanted to oh, set for that sure. up. For sure. Yeah, and the infrastructure of you know training staff and right. all that stuff is yeah, and their their cert is is actually. I was pretty impressed with 
when we went through our L1 that it was it was a pretty hands-on cert. I thought it was every I had gone through personal training certi- sure. certi- uh, certificates before, and it was you know it's always pretty lame. Here, give me your money, we'll give you Usually, the answers. Yeah. Right. You know, um, and uh, that that cert was was pretty intensive. I mean, as intensive as you can get in two days, and and uh, I don't necessarily know if I learned a ton from it, but at least I felt as if. They were teaching the whole time. I was really impressed with it. Yeah. And, and I came from a coaching background. I coached high school football, right. some tracks. So I really was a coach and a personal trainer. And, and as a personal trainer, I didn't feel like I was like coaching people so much. Yeah. So I was attracted to that. Like you're coaching. There's a sport. Yeah. It's there's standards. There's and so I really was attracted to that part. And I tell you, the level one, I was kind of blown away of like you learn how to coach. Yeah. You, you really do. learn that in a personal training certification, how yeah. to control a group. And, and uh, the art of coaching, I think, was, was really kind of... I saw what I did on the, in a football practice field, applying that to adults. It makes so much more sense. And the group dynamic of, of that type of functional fitness class, um, where you're not just... It, I hated personal training. I, you know, I did that for years, and it was not for me... Um, because you ended up being like the counselor, and, the, and that's one reason you know, I kind of wanted to shift gears to owning yeah. a gym too. Is and it's, it's totally different, man. You're coaching a class, and the only thing is, is if, if someone comes in and you're personal training them, they can say, uh, "I really don't feel like doing this today," or they don't give you enough effort. But when they're in a class, they're not just trying to do what you say; they're trying to beat the people on the left and right of them too. Yeah. So they actually go pretty damn hard for most of the, you know, unless you have just no competitive drive whatsoever. It's probably not for you. You're probably no. going to be in the gym much longer if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna head out. So, um, but you ended up uh, deciding to to uh, to sell CrossFit Independence, but then you got into the mat. Um, Explain Matt to me. So Matt, so I actually did Matt beforehand, and then as, as a personal trainer. But basically, I, I call it muscle system wellness. So the concept is, you know, is your muscle system working the way it's supposed to? Are there weak links, and what are the the um, consequences if you have weakness in your muscle system? So it's a um, it's a systematic procedure of addressing or neuromuscular weaknesses in your body and correcting it and also a raising threshold. So muscle system is really complicated, nervous system is really complicated, and just and it's not so much turning muscles on that are off, but muscles have a, each one, ha, each one has a separate tolerance to force. You know, and early on in my personal training career, I, I was um, exposed to something called RTS, Resistance Training Specialist, which is really cool, it's like exercise mechanics at a high level for personal trainers. And they had some upfront Concepts. One is that exercise is invasive, right? If it's, it wasn't invasive, it wouldn't work. It right. wouldn't have adaptations, right? right? So, like, man, I was, was getting my personal training career. I'm like, I know I'm responsible for the forces I'm putting on this client and their muscle tissues, bone, tendons, ligaments. It's like, it's a rabbit hole. You get into sure. exercise science. And uh, I don't know if I had all the answers of how to assess somebody and figure out where where they're okay and where they're not okay and how, how do you make appropriate exercise choices for a client. Right. And I was kind of looking for, for a tool to help me figure that out, you know, an assessment and, and, and answers. And then um, the other thing is is that exercise, there's risk and benefit. There's no good or bad exercise, mm-hmm. right? It's just there's risk and benefit. Right. And how can you weigh that for somebody? How can you weigh risk and benefit? And, uh, you know, it, it, one is 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 the force you're applying appropriate, and can their body tolerate that force? Right. So I had these questions, and I started working in a physical therapy group called Health Quest Health Source. Oh yeah, we've got a Health Source sponsored athlete out here right now. So I, I worked at the first one in Vermilion. Yeah. I had no idea. Oh, that's how I yeah. So it's I, like a hundred yards from my house. Out of school, man. Yeah, Dr. Tom Shack brought me on. And, no uh, shit, that was my first ever chiropractor. Down in the basement. We was, yeah, like, was yeah, house. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now there's like you know a thousand of them. You know what I mean? He's you know, doing insane. it. He's I got to get him on the podcast. Oh, yeah, he's days. interesting. Yeah. Unless you're entrepreneurial, you know. And what when I started there, he's going to open up three more, so there's going to be four four locations. So it was really neat. I was exposed to chiropractic, physical therapy, massage therapy. And I don't know why they hired me. I was just this exercise guy that helped. Right. A knucklehead. You know what I mean? Like, right. Right. But right. it was a great opportunity to to learn about the body and, and uh, rehabilitative exercise and 
I would kind of guide the people through the exercise portion. Right. He was um, he was a really interesting cat because he was not pigeonholed into what he did and was very open minded and he um. Before I had ever, I mean, he was my first chiropractor, but I didn't hear about anybody using stim devices at all. So I came in one time, and he's just starting out his career, and he's like, hey, you know, I've heard this uh, this guy talking about Russian stim for muscle for muscle okay. gain, yeah. and I'm like, let's let's do it. Hook yeah, me okay, up. really? What does it take? Russian stim? That's intense. Yeah. So he did some research on it, figured out how to do it, and so I would go in like twice a week, and he's like, I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah. He goes, but if you want to experiment, we'll do it. He well, would hook cool. me up, and you know, he'd hit my quads, and my feet would shoot up, you know, <laughs> right, straight out, you know. That. Oh my God. So we would do like... more stuff right there, you know? Yeah, we did, uh, we would do twice a week, I think we did quads and hamstrings, and then I think we did lower back and glutes or something, but it was all lower back, because I was a thrower, and I was just trying to, to uh, really... Uh, accentuate those those yeah, lower body sure. muscles and uh, but he was a really interesting cat and then I, I got hooked up did you, did you know Dr. Don Dr. Don Vesessi who was out there that doesn't ring a bell yeah he was a chiropractor from then I think he went on to um, uh, managing his office but uh, he was a character too okay but yeah so you were working out there at Health Source with him and then what happened yeah and again you saw some people get better and, and, and some people didn't and as for the exercise part how do I if someone's got a physical complaint how do we pick the right exercises Mm -hmm. and everybody's so different you know i really kind of struggled with and how do you progress and so right because you can't see weakness on an Mm x-ray you know what i mean so how do you really pick yeah the best exercise choice when someone's in pain like it i want to make somebody worse so uh so i stumbled upon this thing called muscle activation techniques that kind of solve a lot of those answers of how do you kind of read the muscle system right so we look at um it's kind of a paradigm shift we're saying that Sometimes muscle tightness is caused by muscle weakness. Right. So it's the other side. Everybody, you know, is thinking of let's loosen, let's uh, take the the tight stuff and make it loose. Right. Let's focus on tight, 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 make it loose. And uh, this is this Greg Roscoff guy. He's like, hey, some, what if the what if the tightness is there on purpose? Why is it tight? What if it's a protective mechanism? Makes sense, right? You know. So he, he talks a lot about like walking on ice. Neurologically, if there's ice, right, you just feel it and you tighten up. It's yeah. a protective mechanism. So, Matt, we try to melt the ice by finding the weak muscles, making them more stable, making sure they can tolerate force better. And then neurologically, your brain goes, you know what, I'm more stable. I don't need to be tight anymore. Right. I watched, um, for the first time, you hooked me up with your buddy Nick. I, I can't remember Nick's last name. Mosley. Mosley, right. Um, and he came in uh, like three weeks ago. And... Uh, I had my my uh, right hand man uh, Pape in here, and uh, I said, "Hey, just you, you, because he's into this stuff." I said, "You might want to just come check this guy out and see what he has to say." And Zach came in here, and, and Nick comes in. I came in in jeans, and uh, I looked at Zach, and I go, "All right." And I said, "Nick, you're working on Zach today." Okay. Zach's like, "Oh no," <laughs> you know. And uh, he did about an hour long session on him, and there was some marked improvements in the way the kid moved after yeah. he was done. He had some hip issues, but he wasn't dealing so much with the hip as he was his rotational core trunk, trunk uh, rotation, uh, sure. uh, muscles in there. And, and he was he had some blockages where he couldn't rotate one way as far as he could the other mm-hmm. way. And and Nick thought that 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 probably had something to do with his hip hurting. So he did. I mean, he test and retest and. Um, but there was definitely some improvement in his mobility, and he said his hip felt a lot looser when he was done. And then my wife came in a couple days later, and he worked on her, and, and she had some, some definite uh, improvement from it. But it's not stuff that she that they've already been going through. They're not it's she, they're not getting this from a chiropractor. They're not getting it from their their uh, um, physical therapist. So it's it's really interesting stuff. Yeah, it fits in, it kind of to me fits in more in the exercise model. You know, there's, there's right. this gap between medicine and exercise. And, you know, over time, weakness and tightness is going to cause tissues to break down, and then we have pain, and we focus on treating the pain. But there's a point where let's look at the function of your body. Mm-hmm. You know, and another thing from RTS that I learned is, is that the healthy exercise is based on orthopedic and neuromuscular integrity. You lose that, good luck. Sure. Your right. joints don't work, and your neuromuscular don't have that right. control. It's just exercise is going to be hard. Yeah. And you're going to reinforce compensation patterns if you don't 
go back and really figure it out. Yeah, that's tough too because you, know? you start moving poorly to to compensate yeah. and compensation's good. It's it's a good short term solution. Right. Right. You get a splinter in your foot. It's a good yeah. It's hobbling around for a little yeah. bit, but you gotta get the splinter out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's what happens is sometimes you never take the splinter out. And we could yeah. focus on correcting symptoms, and the symptoms get better. But if there's a compensation, and, and if it's been gone, going on for four to six weeks, your brain's going to perceive that as like a new normal. Yeah. I talk to people about massage all the time because people are big into massage, and I try to tell them, yeah, it's going to make you feel good temporarily, but the problem is still there somewhere. Mechanical, neuromechanical. So that's where we kind of fit in. Let's find that. So mm-hmm. the hard part is people want to relieve pain symptoms, but we're, that's what we do. We don't have a license. We're not... Licensed medical provider, yeah, right, so but right. they're conditioned. Uh, you put it go on a table, let's relieve symptoms. Mm-hmm. But we say, hey, we're we're gonna look at what probably no one's looked at. We're gonna look at your range of motion. The cool thing is we look at you head to toe. Right. Because of compensation, because the body so joints are so integrated, one joint doesn't move it affects sure. all the other ones. Um, you gotta be open minded. Let's look at the whole body, right? And there might be a something you didn't really know that you can't do. But you look at right to left, so we use that as an indicator. If you move more on one side compared to the other, and when we say, hey, where's the biggest limitation, right to left is asymmetry, that's what we go after. Let's give you access to that to that now, your biggest Achilles heel. Right. And sometimes, you know, that a symptom might improve as a byproduct, but hopefully over time you're just more mechanically efficient. Yeah, and that's what I noticed with, with Zach, was he was able to turn more to one side than the other, and it was... It was drastic. It wasn't as cool. Yeah. Some, yeah. You know, oh, he kind of moves further on this side, but it was it was major. He could twist way far to his right and couldn't twist it all to his left, and you just don't notice that. No, no. As now you're human. exposed. Wow. Like, oh, yeah. Just, unless you test it, you don't know. Right. We're walking around all day. Oh, well, I need to turn to my left. Well, I just turned my whole hip and everything to the left. I, but you don't realize that that uh, you know your core isn't functioning the way it should. So we need to have a real thorough, he said he's really thorough. He was extremely thorough. And when you check range of motion, there's opportunity for compensation. So how good are you as a practitioner of making sure if you're looking at trunk rotation that you're not picking up motion at the point? Sure, right. Because early on, it was kind of slot, you just don't see it. So we've been trained to really make sure that each ledger's levers and axis and pivot points and making sure that the levers that aren't supposed to move, that they're not moving. That right. there's high amount of quality control. And then uh, the cool thing is we use, uh, you know, it's checks and balances. So not every technique works for everybody every time. You know, what we do is a magic. So, we're, again, we're reach, uh, constantly checking, rechecking. You know, it's weak as a strong man. Did it work? Did, didn't work? Right. And if you pick the right spot, and if this technique is for you, you'll see a dramatic response right away. How did you – is this like a uh, – Week long seminar, or how do you what, what do you do to get to be a certified in this? Well, there's uh, four levels of certification. Mm-hmm. Um, first level is called Jump Start, and it's more for definitely more for exercise for personal trainers. Three weekend courses, three you know 16 hour courses. There's lower body, upper body, and trunk and spine, and that's the introduction. And you're going to learn a muscle test, range of motion test, and you apply isometrics to correct the imbalances, oh, which that's is really interesting. cool. Yeah, real specific. Low intensity asymmetrics. So we think of it in, in jumpstart as posi- let's find positional weaknesses, not muscles, but what positions are you weak in? Right. Right. So it might be weak in left trunk rotation. Right. So we'll do asymmetrics in those specific positions. Get it firing again. Then you can start to incorporate the isometrics and progress them in exercise, which right. is neat. So now let's do some eccentrics there. Then concentric and add dynamic motion, so you can really have a process of taking your weak links and over time, in different kinds of resistance training, so it's like up to speed with, you know, doing a squat or heavy stone right. to get access to all the stability. Yeah, because you can be as training. mobile as possible if you're not strong in those end ranges, you're still gonna get hurt. So that's <laughs> what I love about this. No one gets hurt neutral. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. these positions. So with MAT. Yeah. We do manual muscle testing, but we test in a shortened position. Mm-hmm. So where you're mo- where you're the most vulnerable. So we're going to try to take a muscle and shorten it as much as we can. Oh yeah. And let's see if you're strong in that full end range. Can you provide stability in that vulnerable position? Right. Yeah. So, which is kind of a neat thing, and a lot of times you'll you'll find weakness in these end ranges that you wouldn't find anywhere else. What do you see most when you deal with with functional fitness athletes? Something more than others. You seeing shoulder issues, 
Man, ever, it's, it's, it's uh, a lot of foot and ankle stuff. Yeah. Let's see, number one, there's a lot of shoe wear, bad mechanics, a lot of that seems a lot to be of people like the, are limiting the ankle holy motion. grail, trying to figure out what shoes you should be wearing. You know, people are lifting weights in the next minute they're sprinting and one's good for one and not good for the other it's important. again it's all about man- healthy exercise about managing force mm-hmm. that's it yeah it's force on your body and the shoes the shoes you wear is going to in- change the forces going through your body right so yeah it depends on your activity that's something i'm really passionate about really passionate about the foot foot mechanics restoring foot mechanics shoe wear that you know, hopefully, it makes you perform better and and is healthy for your joints over time. Have you found something as far as lifting that that people should be wearing? It depends what your goal is too. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I'm straight up barefoot constantly. So. Yeah, I think barefoot <laughs> is, is optimal. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there's are you ready for it? Can your tissues tolerate? Yeah. The foot's well, super complex. I was doing. Uh, we did. Uh, we called it the Fat Man Open last weekend, and we just took eighteen. What was it? Eighteen. Two, eighteen, three, whatever it was last weekend, and we we threw some strongman stuff in there, but yeah. we kept the jump ropes, and I don't know, I, we were doing single unders instead of double unders. I think I was like four hundred in, yeah. and just felt something go in my calf. It was just like, oh, oh my yeah, god! But yeah, I'm doing yeah. it barefoot, like a moron, yeah. and uh, it hurts when you miss barefoot. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a toe in there good. or something. Yeah, we get a lot of people who um, I ki- I kick them out of their shoes a lot of times. They'll come in with some some big uh you know it's almost like they're lifting in a cast you know like their foot's been put in this this rubber foam cabinet that's not letting it move the way it should you'll so see that's it, but it's comfortable roll. you know what i right. mean so how many things are comfortable and feel good now but man there's long-term repercussions sure. it means it's healthy for you yeah so you got to get out of this idea of comfort versus What's really what's good for your yeah? Your I mean, body there's and there's input and all that. minimal shoes out there that are probably better for you than than the big. As long as you're ready, so there could be a progression, yeah. and you know I, I like the Vivo barefoot shoes a lot. That's probably my favorite. Like the brand. five finger. Not five finger. Right. That's that's Vibram. This is Vivo barefoot. Okay, I don't think I've so seen do those. So check them out. That's yeah. my number one shoe I'd recommend for like a barefoot minimalist shoe. Yeah. Super wide. So what you're looking for if you're fucking handle it wide toe box, right? Lightweight. Yeah. It looks like a foot. Pretty common sense. A shoe should look like makes, a human makes foot. Makes sense, right? <laughs> so should you should look, look for like that, a shoe box. You know, and that it's flexible and uh, the appropriate, you know, heel. Um, we call it the uh, the angle. You know. Yeah. Can't think of the name, but the the stack, not the stack height, but the you know, the angle from the heel to the, to the ball of the foot. Right. So the, that needs to be appropriate for the person. So if you've been wearing, you know, Air Jordans for thirty years, yeah. you know, it's like. Don't go zero to sixty. Yeah, you know you gotta be prepared because I've seen people get hurt jumping off the boat too early. So I suggest have have a pair of minimalist shoes and walk or run in them. But I want you to have the context that this is a foot training session. That it makes might sense. be like ten minutes, right. five minutes. I'm gonna wear these minimal, minimalist shoes or barefoot. I'm gonna run. Running is probably the best thing you could do to train the feet. Mm-hmm. Running barefoot outside of just walking and lifting with it, but you're gonna have more force going through there and just you know build that tolerance up but um again I'm, I'm i it's a strength training session for your feet which is going to have impact on your total body right it'll move all the way up all the way up and strong feet strong foundation that's going to affect i was amazed we started doing yoga this year and uh like i said i i lift i do everything barefoot i mean i it, it, unless someone's forcing me to yeah. put a pair of shoes on it's just the way i've always been but great. um i was amazed at how weak my feet were doing these yoga poses, just having to curl your toes under and, yeah. and splay them out. And, um, it was a real wide, you know, eye-opening thing that, you know, my feet are not strong and they cramp up and they hurt. Cramping's a big sign. If they're yeah. cramping, it's not, yeah. Which not because they're dehydrated, because there's muscle. You know, oh, yeah, it was definitely, you know. you know, rolling those toes under and stuff. I mean, they've gotten better, but those first uh, couple months of yoga were, were, were pretty uh, eye-opening for Yeah. Me. Well, I think foot health is important. You know, in that healthy, fun, high-functioning foot, and it's about exposure. You know what I mean? You gotta expose your foot to different. They're made for different terrain. Yeah. So I'm big in trail running and hiking, and I go rucking. You know, if I go ruck rucks in the yeah, plates, yeah, and yeah. man, I just want that my foot, my body have that exposure to different terrain. And yeah, you see a lot of. Uh, we get military guys in here who, uh, you know, have horrible knees and horrible lower backs, and and. I'm, I wonder if a lot of that is from them having to do all this crazy shit in these combat boots that aren't exactly made, f- 
you know, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. ergonomically to support your foot correctly, you know. Yeah, these guys get beat up, man. It yeah. just rolls right yeah. up their spines and into their hips. And, and the 80-pound packs. And I know it's, as a, uh, Dr. Mark Kukazella, um, expert, like, barefoot, running, health, and and uh, he's in the Air Force. And I think, could be wrong, but he's worked with the military to help solve some of these issues. Yeah. Because the amount of time and money that goes into the rehab of these guys, when you invest in these guys and they're laid up because they're... Right. Like, their feet or stress fractures, you know, so they're, they're, they're trying to figure it out. Yeah, if you, you know can't I mean? deploy because you have a foot injury, yeah, you and know. Yeah, invested this time and energy into this money to train the soldier. Yeah. So. Yeah, you want to, I, you know, that makes sense that you would get somebody who can fix this stuff. I know Matt Wedding, I don't know if you know who Matt Wedding is, he's been on the podcast. I've heard he, um, world champion powerlifter, but he works uh, specifically now with police, fire, and military, and he talked about uh, the body types of soldiers from World War II era to now, and he That's said the the guys coming into boot camp in World War II were averaging like 165 pounds at 5'8", okay. and they came from active lifestyles because most of them were coming either out of the factory or out of the farm. Sure. And he says now what you're getting is the same height at 185 pounds, but a sedentary lifestyle. And these are the guys that are now breaking as soon as they strap a parachute on their back and, and have them jump. How scary is that? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's pretty scary that's, to think about it, man. I'm like, yeah, that that's what uh, we're dealing with here. And he, you know, his job is to not just get these guys able to run and do calisthenics, but he's strengthening them. You know, he's having them do basically a lot of functional fitness type stuff. You know, they're yeah. deadlifting, they're kettlebell swings, they're. They're uh, squatting, they're pressing overhead, all the stuff that, you know, lo and behold, is actually healthy for you. Yeah, right. Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for years, that none of that stuff was good for you, you know? Right. That's not the way you train. You should be doing step aerobics or whatever. I tell you, speaking of that, have you seen that movie, The Motivational Factor? Motivational you know. Factor? There's a YouTube. I'm, right, I'm going to write some oh of this stuff gosh, down. Oh, my Motivation Factor. If you remember, about a year, two years ago, there was like a Facebook video of like this 1960s PE class. In California, from that. when JFK, JFK wanted everyone to be healthy and strong. So this stronger. is a movie, a documentary based on this. Really? It's so you'd love it. It goes into like classical physical education, like at the turn of the century, in the 1900s, and like what they were doing, and and then this, you know, JFK got into it. But I mean, if, have you read the Soft American? I haven't. Oh, so Bring imagine this, this down too, Joel. Imagine this. Imagine. <laughs> Night, I think this is December 26, 1960, I believe, or 59, early 60s, President-elect Kennedy, mm-hmm. right? President-elect writes an essay in Sports Illustrated. Wow. Sports Illustrated called a soft American. Yeah. So he's going to become president in three weeks, right? Like, you're... you're, you're he's already been elected. He's, he's already been elected, but, like, ahead. there's yeah. probably, like, impressing stuff. Yeah. Talk about, you know, the military back then, and... And, like, this is one of his first things. He wrote this thing called The Soft American, and, like, you uh, you feel called out. Imagine your football coach going, you're soft. Yeah, right. Like, what, like, like no. <laughs> Not Can soft. you imagine that it's happening crazy. now? It went in, there's no way. No. But, like, he's honest, and he's like, hey, like, the you talk about the Greeks and the Romans. Yeah. And, like, man, the, they kind of got this Western classical idea of sound body, sound mind, right. sound spirit. And for the success of our country, like there's a relationship between the vitality of the human body and the vitality of our country. And I think he says the greatest resource America has is the health and vitality of its citizens. Look where we are. Look where we're at now. now. He's seeing this now, and there's all these studies of like children in like Finland Mm -hmm. compared to USA, and they're already seeing dramatic differences in in health and in 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 testing scores. Yeah. And how it affects your intellectual development, like in your math scores compared to that, and emotional well-being and well even a decline in all those things you know and, and it doesn't uh, surprise me that they might be you know all interrelated it's funny though that you get throughout history these leaders like JFK back then talking about how soft we are as Americans and we're sitting here in 2018 talking about how soft we are as Americans and uh, I remember hearing a quote from Genghis Khan and the quote was up the stairs with wooden shoes down the stairs with silk slippers. Okay. So the, as the Mongols swept across the steppes and took over all these countries, they were hard and they lived in yurks and, yeah. and they were just brutal. And then their children came up 
and life was a lot easier, and they're dressing in Chinese oh, still yeah, again. Way, yeah, right. And that's that just... empire just started to go down and down and down, and, you know, the, the Khans lamented about how we used to be so hard, and it's a scary concept to consider. A generation or two, it's like, so what do we do now? Like, I feel like, man, I got these little kids in America they're going to live in. Yeah. Like, I don't want them growing up in a soft America. Right. Like, what do we do now? Like, we, we know better, so it's like... I think it's... it's um, it, it, I don't know if you're going to be able to change the uh, attitudes of, of the country, but what we can do is work within our family groups right. and, and, yeah. and gyms. And, you know, Aaron and I are very, uh, very adamant about our son going out and doing things. We live in this neighborhood that might as well be in the 1970s because he's got kids down the street from the house. And he lives in this neighborhood where there's not much traffic so we say all right go home and then be on when the street lights come That's off awesome, just yeah. like we were ki- when yeah, we were right. kids you know i have no idea where this kid is all day mistakes, long. man yeah they're down at the lake fishing they're screwing around and he comes home and lo and behold he's fine every day and no, not much of a problem but he's a he's a pretty tough kid and most of that is because he's either out playing or he's in here training or he's big into Jocko Willink now he loves right? Jocko yeah. Willink which yeah. is like thank you go. god you know yeah, right. yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> of all the people to dig he digs <laughs> Jocko you know wow. but you're at a really uh, critical point now because you've got these four young saplings mm-hmm. you know ready to take in whatever you throw at them what do you think i mean how are you guys looking at it oh man they uh it's important to me so i want to be yeah. proactive about it you know physically and mentally and emotional toughness and i mean you know they're see me exercising mm-hmm. and my wife you know and we got a real nice garage gym with the closing the gym down and yeah. squat rack and ghd and olympics yeah. so he he wants he wants me to coach him he's like right. hey, coach me he's like i want to He's got a little, a little Olympic lifting bar. And he, he's turning seven next month, so I'm going to start. We turn seven, we'll start doing some Olympic lifting coaching. Yeah, right. Hopefully, get some of his. He's got a bunch of nephews. My wife's got a big Italian family. So yeah, yeah. We got it's it's thirty some nieces it's and nephews. So. Not uh, stunting the growth of the Chinese lifters. So I don't yeah. see why a kid from Brexville is going to be any worse. You know, so that, that'd be such a good build some confidence. You know, do some trail running with me, and you yeah, know, you have some cone drills now. Set some cones up and just let them. Yeah, I'm the one guy. I'm I'm not a military guy at all. Never, never was in a military the day of my life. But I'd be just as happy if if he went into the Navy as he did going to college. You know, whatever. Um, uh, if if you are going to do that, do something worthwhile while you're in there. You yeah. know, go be a soldier and and uh, and do it. But I think that uh, I, I'm going to check out that soft American. That's oh that sounds gosh, really gonna... interesting. Couple pages, man. It's like this. That's amazing. This, uh, it motivates you big time. I just like the fact that we can, like I said, we we can take these small, intimate areas of our life, whether it's our family or our neighborhood or our gym or whatever, and just try to focus on those hundred people. You know, right, just exactly. make them as stout and as formidable as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's cool about the theory of what the CrossFit community is is you have these little bases of operations all over the country that are slowly breeding that into people and as as irritated as i get with with crossfit hq as an entity Mm -hmm. um what what greg glassman has done for the world as a fitness movement i think is is fantastic Mm -hmm. he's and it's it the just I think just the marketing of CrossFit has made this a popular thing that's going to help everybody who does it. You know, mm-hmm. I don't think anybody who goes through it and well, I mean, I'm sure you have some people who have bad coaching or whatever, but I think everyone who goes through it goes through it and says this is the best shape I've been in yeah, my life. Yeah, better know? person for it. You know. And yeah. Yeah, I think it's you know just the, thanks when Reason opened the gym is just so interested in just developing the whole the total person. Isn't you know, it like, interesting though that with your background. <laughs> You, I'm guessing, had such an advantage to the people around you because A, you were a coach, B, you had this thirst for knowledge of how people work and how they get injured and how they get stronger. And I think that's something we miss in a lot of gyms. You know, it's we get people who love CrossFit, so they open a CrossFit gym. Mm-hmm. It's 
not exactly the best pedigree. It's opener. a problem, man. It's a hey, green. That's one reason with the gym. We what we started to rebrand is 76 Athletics. Yes. Because we wanted to have our own brand and that tied into, right? People weren't taking this profession. You right. Know, one is a gym owner. There's a profession as a gym owner versus like a hobby gym. Mm-hmm. And yeah, perf- I mean, again, the the, the um, responsibility of training someone was was important to me and having answers. Yeah. So I'm taking that as responsibility to their health and their future health. And you got to be very honest about where you are coaching wise, you know, mm-hmm. what you can and can't do. And, um, I get people who will come to me every once in a while who want traditional CrossFit or they want more endurance type stuff. And I'm like, yeah, this isn't the place for you. Right. You know, right. we're, the, we're the end game of the functional fitness area where, you know, you've gone to a bunch of different CrossFit type gyms and mm-hmm. you really like it, but you really like the weightlifting and you kind of like the conditioning, but you'd rather do more weightlifting. So we're a little top heavy on the, on the weightlifting part, you know, um, but you have to be honest, like, so when people come in and, and say they want that traditional CrossFit, I used to send them to Bingo all the time, yeah, you sure know? Yeah, right, right. Go see Bingo. Bingo's got this, you know. He's going to, you're going to do muscle-ups and mm-hmm. handstand push-ups, and you don't want a guy who's 250 pounds showing you how to do muscle-ups. I think I appreciate that about you. It's <laughs> good to be honest and, and just know your strengths and, and yeah. have a, you know what, have a niche. Yeah. You know, and serve a pocket of people that fit within your wheelhouse. Right. It takes integrity to do that. And sometimes Stay it's hard line. because the dollar signs can be, you got a bigger pocket of people that are looking for this general yeah. fitness. But, man, yeah, it's, yeah, find, yeah. That, find your tribe, you know, Stay to, to find lane. you, you know. Stay do, in your lane. Do what you're good. And that's always a uh, the, the, kind of a condescending thing to say to some people. But, you, you know, if we all just focused on that, we would be, I think we'd be better off. Yeah. What did you find? Did you, did you find... Irritants when you were a gym owner that drove you nuts. I mean, either with CrossFit or with just being a gym owner in general. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's, I think any own and owning any businesses, yeah. there's there's it's being your own boss isn't always <laughs> fun yeah, either. You know, yeah. just you know being able to turn it turn it off. Um, I think one just the expectations people come in with 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 CrossFit. Right. You know, and and one of my mentors he said, you know, CrossFit is like a spoon. Right. All, the invention's not going away. Right. Spoon's not going anywhere. This is great, but you can still stick a spoon in your eyeball. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Isn't so that no, a great like, analogy? Love that analogy. And there's people sticking the spoon in their eyeball. There's no like application. Yeah. This is a quality control method of how to take somebody new, train them appropriately so they don't hurt themselves, and and uh, you know, <sighs> just saw the the churn rates were so high. Right. You know what I mean? And. It, it, I think you're trying to serve everybody too. You, yeah. you don't have that identity like you guys have. It's easy for people to fall off, and because they they weren't being served, you know, they were they're, they're emotionally right. weren't connected anywhere. For some reason they were leaving, and it was really hard to in a group atmosphere only really with such a diverse goal setting. Yeah, it's hard to keep everybody happy. So that was hard. Well, so. Then you get those people who don't show up at the gym. You know, maybe they'll come in three times a month. But they're yeah. saying, oh, this isn't working for me. Well, yeah, you got to actually come in and, and do the program and do the so work. There's a disconnect somewhere. Either they should, you should have fought right, them out. Right, yeah. So, I've, you know, yeah. in, in, in the fitness industry, I, I know I had to learn sales really early on, you know, having a sales process. And, and I joined the Mad Lab business group because I figured I needed help with that part. And they had a, I've heard them at the Mad Lab method. I think. Larry from yeah. CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't always do this. C Town. C Town, baby. It's so hard. C L E and C Town. I know, somebody I know, right? And he had sent me some stuff on there, but I didn't, uh, honestly, I didn't uh, read it because half the times I open shit and forget to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine I'm not the only one. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just a method of using personal training for the most part for your beginners, right? Which was really, and having the personal training background, the sales background yeah. wasn't a problem for me. So, it was nice to. Have someone one on one. I could really get to know them as a person, know their goals, and I could really say, well, "Here's what they expect here." Mm-hmm. And in the first day, you know, we could flush that out, see if they're fit or not. You know, so that process, which is more expensive to do it right, um, as it should personal be, training, taking yeah, your time to work with them one on one. Right. But with the but the cool thing was personal training to prepare them for. They had to reach benchmarks, then they could get in class. So they'd earn their way in class. Yeah. So really like that from a quality control perspective. They could fit our our vibe of our gym, and we could like teach you know the 
this is how our gym works. This is our right. core values. Right. Like, not just the technical component, but I mean, how to become it? part of the clan. If you see somebody else, you look them in the eyes and say hi. That's yeah. your expectation here. Right. So yeah, we, we the, used to do something similar to that where we would extend because we always did on ramps a little differently, and we, that was basically how we did on ramps. We would just take. I would basically pay the trainer myself to come in and work with the people one on one until they were ready to get into the classes. Yeah. And I looked at that as as a poor businessman. I looked at that as a way to make my life easier because by the time they actually get in the class, I don't have to stand over them yeah, and right. make sure everything solves that problem. Yeah, and uh, it's not fair to the other people in the class. Absolutely, because the problem is you get the the. the your OG is, and they need coaching too. Sure, they do. Yeah, you know what I mean, it, but it's easy to like, hey, I know what they're doing. I have to pay as much attention to them. Mm-hmm. And this new class become a time suck. Yeah, so it affects your whole class vibe. Yeah, the, those those guys that that kind of have it dialed in will make you a better coach because mm-hmm. you have to figure out ways to make them yeah. better. And I right, always told, right, totally. um, I had a girl come here one time uh, from another gym, and I. There's a myth that goes around that, that you get people from other gyms. You know, oh, well, you know, I go to CrossFit No Mercy over here, and but they suck, so I'm going to go over to yeah. Blind Hug. That, that, that's such a rarity, yeah. you know, because you're not buying into programming. You're buying into the community of people, you mm-hmm. know. So it's it's a rarity that happened. But the one time this girl came to our gym and was frustrated um, with the fact that she couldn't get past, a, I think she was like squatting 250, and she couldn't get past that. And uh, I knew her coach and knew this woman was not a strong woman. She was very good at gymnastics, but was not strong at all. And I said, it's very difficult to teach someone to squat 500 pounds if they've never squatted 500 pounds. Mm Because there's all these different things that happen to your body and and different stressors that happen to it that don't happen at these lighter weights. And I I gave her the same thing I told you. I said, you know, there's no way I can teach you to do a muscle up. Yeah, you know? right, right, yeah. So, you know, again, you stay in that lane, but, um, yeah, it's it, it, that, it comes down to that coaching and what, what you're good at. And I think as gym owners, we need to triple down on what we're good at, you know. For sure. And then there's plenty, of, there's plenty of people out there that need to get fit. We can just kind of push them in different directions. Well, then you know? they get the scarcity mindset, you know what I mean? Right. Just, but, man, there's so I mean, only 80% of there's twenty percent of the U.S. population does the minimum requirements of cardiovascular strength. Wow, twenty percent. Twenty percent. Sixty percent. Um, well, forty percent are doing the cardiovascular, which is one hundred fifty minutes of moderate intensity a week. Okay. This is the minimum. That's and the minimum. Right. The minimum requirements two two strength training workouts. Right. Probably we need the federal government. So we got man, we got eighty percent of the people. Right? Walk into a Target. Man, there's got, plenty and, of clients around, and that's what we need, right? That's the soft Americans. We got how do we reach those people? Well, I think that that's the that would be the beauty if we as fitness professionals actually worked together as a unit right. and said, and, and and where we where where we go wrong is we work against each other. We don't work against the Planet Fitnesses that don't want you to show up and yeah. work out. But, you know, I, I mentioned Tom Reaney because I love him. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, he uh, runs Black Flag. And if me and Tom Reaney work together well, why can't me and Joe Schmo down the street work together well and send people different? If I get an Olympic lifter, yeah, I can do your Olympic lift. But if you want to get really technical Olympic lifting training, go see Tom. Yeah. That's your guy, you yeah. know. And I think if we could all just come together, it would be nice if there were... Uh, more coaching summits where yes. CrossFit said, hey, I want the box owners to come to this and we're going to make it pretty inexpensive for you to come and then have some successful box owners like Jason Kalipa tell you how to run your business mm-hmm. or you know, some good communities where you've got three or four coaches that are near each other that are working together and coming together and telling you how they it's run that best, community. It's my best practices. And that's what right. the Mad, Loop, Mad, Mad Lab group did. I felt like okay. I had that there. Yeah. It had as a group. Let's but find guys like practices. me don't open the emails. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's a <some learned>, right? <laughs> i got to write this down to Mad Lab. Mad Lab. Yeah. But, like, you know, like, you know, if we, you know, me and uh, Toby and 
Larry from Seatown, we kind of saw that need, and we did a couple things where he just got invited some coaches to come to my house, have a barbecue, see, I some beers, yeah. and just have a bonfire. Let's just first of all, let's get to know each other. Mm-hmm. Let's maybe not talk about shops so much. Let's get to know each other right. and, and and connect and realize that again that scarcity mindset. You got to really overcome that. You yeah, know what I mean, there's some people I, I get it, but I used to man, get really irritated when uh, someone would come back and give me a. Uh, oh, you know, this gym owner said something about you, or they used yeah. to really irritate me, and now I look at it as, you know, that that comes out of lack of confidence right. and um, and and something deep within themselves where they 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 don't believe in their product or they don't they're believe not, in something themselves. That's, they're, they're not enough. Yeah. yeah. So I almost feel sorry for when yeah. that happens. It's like you never see that from a successful guy. You know, Elon Musk mm-hmm. doesn't care what happens to. The people that are coming up behind right. him. He's too focused on yeah. putting right, a right. freaking Pinto into space. You know, <laughs> right, he's right. not worried about that. Got time for that? Yeah, yeah. I don't have time for yeah. this negative. And and the other thing is, is I realized pretty early into this business that 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 rising tide raises all boats. Yeah. Exactly. So if we work together as a fitness industry against these outside interests that are more corporate, you know, it'll raise everybody's game it'll raise everyone's product and then we'll just be flush with right. people wanting to get healthy you know right right iron sharpens iron you know yeah, absolutely just, yeah but take some humility and you know yeah. some character to and it's something i didn't have when i started you know this the whole point of this refined savage thing was part of my transition from being this animal who traveled all over north america on the weekends and threw heavy weights and slapped girls on the ass and, and had to throw for his money and then was just competing all the time. Yeah. And then this transition into a hopefully more enlightened entity that doesn't need that constant bullshit competition with yeah, everybody right. over everything. Right. To the point where I can't let my kid win a you know, a game of cards, you know. <laughs> That's what you know. It's like you cross the line. You have a problem. <laughs> <No. Yeah. laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> that's awesome. that's, that's where we're at with that. Enlightened brother, man, yeah, the Renaissance man, right? That like, try yeah, it to be, yeah man. I can tell, man, reading reading the books and uh, Well, I try to. I, I I tell I tell Aaron all the time that you know it, it doesn't make sense to put twenty pounds on your deadlift if you haven't read a book since you were yeah fifteen years old. And I think what they said being a gym owner that was a frustration too. It's like man, I care about the whole person, and right. I saw so many people that eggs. Everybody wants to be happy, and you know. Self-esteem, that's what they're buying, you know, at yeah. the end of the day. And I feel like so many people put the eggs in the, in the, in the physical basket, you know, and the intellectual, and emotional, that's all, they're all important, man, you know. And you have to have it all. Reading good books are important. Yep. You, know? you have to have it all. And that, uh, I, you know, when we talked about Powell was one of the main influences for me getting started in this. And I always tell the same story that when, when I talked to Powell about it, I said, you know, the least thing I'm in, the least interesting thing I'm interested in is weightlifting. Yeah. You know, because it, it is, it's just training. There's nothing. It's cool, and the struggle is cool, and that's what I like out of it. But you know, there's so much more out there, and so many more things to see. That's. Have you seen his Rage to Live thing? He's starting now. No. Uh, oh man, he's. I saw the it. shirt. I think the other yeah. day. Yeah. So he's going through some kind of metamorphosis now that I'm really digging. Um, I don't know if he's backing away from Uncharted or okay. if he's he's doing. I know that he's working for Tom at Black Flag mm-hmm. pretty pretty heavily now, but he's starting this Rage to Live thing with Alina, and you know, th- there's there's a handful of people on the planet that I just absolutely love mm-hmm. as human beings, and Powell and Alina are, are two of those people. Yeah, they're great, and they're just all about traveling all over the world yeah. and putting out awesome pictures and awesome blogs about it and uh i wish him really well with that i hope that that just takes I'm off check into that yeah so the sh- shirt he's wearing in some beautiful place at the mountain like, yeah i think they're in cool. Kauai right now is that right okay. yeah that might and have been it yeah he was the one who got me to go to iceland yeah you know, we were at a party at my house and i told him i got this invite to go to iceland i'm like yeah i'm not gonna go and he almost ripped my ears off. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Why aren't you going? Yeah, that's what he did. I said, okay, I guess I'll go to Iceland. <laughs> yeah, great. but he's a, he's an old soul. Him and Alina both. Old we just, soul. Yeah, yeah, both you know. of them. yeah, that's a good. 
we uh, we did a podcast with Alina that's coming up, I think, next week. Uh, I don't know when this will get released, but uh, I think we're putting it out next week. And we're, we just sat down and talked about the Lord of the Rings for an hour and a half. Yeah, so. that was so that the call. Yeah. It's coming out. Oh, dude, it's man. coming out. Yeah, Tolkien, that's awesome. Yeah, Just that's like that. good people. But uh, yeah, that rage to live thing that they're doing, I, I'm really hoping that takes off and, and goes somewhere. I think that you know, talk, I always think like, what does your fitness serve? You know what I mean? Is it just serving your own ego? Right. I think, like you said, the weight, that's like the, it's not interesting anymore. No. It gets old. It's like that, your physical training and a greater context, you know, and that, that soft American thing. It's yeah. almost like your duty to be healthy and fit for your country. Right. For your family, for your, like having that, that deeper um, thing there. The one thing that I, I really want to write a fitness book about this, but um, I love like the Greco-Roman culture and like the old, you know, how that's developed in the Western right. world and the physical training part of it. And uh, the one thing I keep thinking of is, you know, I want my physical training for me and my kids to, to develop virtue. Right. You know, I love like that. I think we've read some of like the Stoic philosophers mm-hmm. and man, they're like build virtue, you know, and yeah. the card, you know, the four, the four cardinal virtues. Yes. I've heard of that. The quiz, the quiz um, well, with Marcus Aurelius. I think he's, there's some of those guys that uh, came up with them. Yeah. And of course, I don't remember any of them. But it was Marcus Aurelius that came up. I can't up remember. He might have been. I know it was yeah. I mean, Aristotle or Plato or some of those guys. But um, the four cardinal virtues, which means to hinge. Like uh-huh. your, your life hinges on, or society hinges on these four virtues. Prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. Mm-hmm. So in my process, like, man, is what I'm doing, is this book I'm reading, or is, this, is my physical training developing those? So like prudence, am I making good decisions? Is this, is this training helping me be, become the best version of myself? You know, is is it is it going to be healthy for my you know my body now and in the future? Is my seven year old version of myself gonna you know have consequences from this Absolutely. training? If it's right. my ego, then may, it might not. It might have a slippery slope and make some yeah. bad choices. Yeah. And then um, the second one is justice. So justice is giving someone what's due or required. So it is is this physical training taking away something from my family, or or is you know is is, is it just to my future self, mm-hmm. right? Or is it taking up so much time and energy that I'm not reading and doing having a real right. balanced life? So, like, man, how I, I filter these thoughts. It's a thoughts great through, you know? way to do it. It's a great way to do that. And I think a lot of people, it wasn't. It was kind of self-serving, ego-based well, I think training. about my training, and I don't know what it is right now because yeah. I don't know where <laughs> I'm at. You know, it definitely is not going to serve the 70-year-old version of myself. You yeah. Know? There's, n- there's nothing there that's going to do that. Um, I talked to uh, Steve Schmidt, who's a strong man, uh, and you know, we talked about the fact that nothing we do is healthy. I mean, it's not. We're we're fooling of ourselves, yeah. me and him, right, not right. the stuff that <laughs> right, you right. guys are doing. But we're fooling ourselves if we're telling it it's for health right, reasons because right, exactly. it's not. You know? Anything that's competitive. Yeah. Competitive walking isn't healthy. You know sure. I mean? like, sure. So that, but you got to make that. But that's a great way to filter your being you know you're a transient person in this universe and you're 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 filtering everything you do through this this prism of of guidelines that will point you you again they're like universal you know what i mean it's like prudence making good decisions is it just is it you know Again, it, it might be not be just in my country. Again, again, if it's a country, if we're out of shape, our soldiers won't be mm-hmm. as strong. Like that's that's not a just decision to be out of shape or for your company. My my wife's in corporate wellness, and like his employees are, are not healthy, and it's costing them dollars. Like yeah, man, like sure. you being out of shape isn't that just? It's a lack yeah. of character. You know what I mean? And, and then fortitude and temperance. So it takes fortitude, right, to do that. Yeah. And mental toughness and grit and. And uh, I love that training develops that. Yes. You know what I mean? It should right. be developing that, that grit, mental right. toughness. And that temperance, too, is the hard part of you know, self-control. Maybe that I love to do this thing, but maybe it's better for my 70-year-old version of myself to lay off lay off, off or just massage. Is, I'm, I'm turning 40 in August. Like I'm thinking about all these, you know, the young, 70-year-old Joel, version <laughs> is around the corner, man. And just, you know, like... Oh man! So, are, are you said you're thinking about writing a book? What do you? I've been thinking about writing a book for a while. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I've been working on it a little bit here and there. I just got to com- commit to. Is it basically it. the type of stuff we were just talking about? Yeah, kind virtue of... and you know, one of the most important things is like my Christianity, my faith, mm-hmm. like tying my faith 
developing virtue, exercise, physical training, kind of developing all of that. And so how, how do you make all that better? You know, how do, how do they all kind of sink into a, a practical lifestyle? How's that make right. a better dad, a better husband, a better... I've got a guy I'd like to know. hook you up with. His name's Jason Pauly. We had him on the show uh, earlier this year. Really interesting cat. He, um, he was on the circuit with me for probably 10 years, and he was a former minister who... Uh, what, you know, he was a big, giant, strongman guy, and he, when he retired from throwing, he changed his whole fitness regimen, and now he does these crazy adventure races, and he, you know, he's oh, cool, super yeah. lean, and so one um, extreme or the other, one extreme yeah. or the other. But then he started to look at his faith as opposed to his uh, affiliation with a certain church. Okay, and him being actually employed by the church and all these negative things that were coming as being an employee of this. And okay. he broke away from the church and then basically like we're talking about with fitness, he started with his family and yeah. getting his family more into the truth as far as his right. he's concerned. And uh, he's so much happier. He's just yeah. a happy guy now, you know? And um, he doesn't have any of the, and I don't, I, I, I can't say, he called it nonsense, I can't say it's nonsense, I've never had any affiliation with a church, but I think it's just so streamlined for him now that okay. there's no, there's no red tape in the way of making sure his faith and his family's faith and everything about his life is going in the right direction. Yeah. Um, he's a, he's a pretty interesting character, i got to get him back on the show. Well, that's fine, I was thinking, you know, a lot of time to think now, you stay home yeah, dad, right. and just, I, I like to build things down to like it's simplest form and, mm-hmm. and you know one thing I when I start coaching people now is uh, I kind of ask like what's on a scale of one to ten where's your sense of peace and joy you know what I mean let's be honest like yeah right everything you do what do people want they want happiness they want yeah. to feel at peace right and and is your physical trend whatever it is does that does it fit that or not you know what I mean so like I think that's an important part of checking in after those virtues but like man, do I have peace and joy? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, it, and, and I started seeing people who had that. I was, I was attracted to that. Mm-hmm. Like, how do they get that? I want sure. that. And, and that, that's authentic and real and lasting. And, and you can have that peace and joy in difficult circumstances. Yeah. You know, that's the hard part is I, uh, to have that when it's things aren't going your way, you know? I'm so much happier now having, and I don't know what, what it is about the, the toxicity of being on the circuit. Once I got off the circuit and opened my own gym and quit my horrible job yeah. and uh, you know got out of a horrible relationship and I married my wife and everything just... But once one thing started, it snowballed. Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. You want more of that. You want right. It's like subconsciously it becomes like a like your north star. Exactly. You know what That's I mean? exactly just, right. Yeah. And you start looking for ways to bring other people along with you. Yeah, sure. And uh, just try to be kind to people is is the key. I think to, just to making yourself happy is just yeah, know, kindness, not throwing sure. that negativity into the and I catch myself all the time I'm driving in traffic and some old lady will come it's always an order always it's always an old lady I know every time but I've got to reel myself (laughs) back in alright maybe she's a hundred years old or maybe she just had a bad day or you know you you just got to reel it in and you know you can't I I get so irritated with myself my wife the other day She uh, she does this kind of like a small food business for for some people she'll do their meal prep and everything and um, it was like 9:30 at night and I had our refrigerator was full so I had to take all these meals here to the gym for people to pick up. It's 9:30 at night, honey. I don't want to and I'm getting pissed off. Yeah. And I'm getting mad. I don't want to go out and it's cold outside. I get out, I drive there and I drive back and I'm thinking to myself the whole day, what an asshole. You know, you don't have that hard of a life. You're not yeah. pulling crab traps right. on the Bering right. Sea or yeah, something, sure, you know. Exactly. And I wouldn't apologize to her. I said, you know, it was ridiculous. You know, I'm throwing a temper tantrum like a baby, you know, when it's not that bad, it's, you know. It's, it's That's so, the least I have to do, you know. so hard, man. You know, I know. It's, it's, pull you know, man. as long as you pull yourself together, it's healthy to have that good perspective of, man, yeah, there's people, you know, worse, worse, worse shape lot of, than we are. Yeah, you know, really. And, so, uh, what? Uh, where are you gonna go? I mean, what? What? It, are you? You said you're training some people now, or a little bit. So I work a little bit. I, I call it the CLE Muscle Lab. So I started training some people out of my garage, yeah. do some muscle activation out of my basement, and uh, trying to balance work and home. So right now, you know, for the time being, and just a couple clients here and there to satisfy me. But uh, 
as my kids start getting more to school and more school age, I have some plans to uh, be more aggressive with my uh, muscle activation business. Good. Uh, really have gotten into running. So as you can talk about things changed. Like mm-hmm. I became, kind of became a runner for some reason, and, and I'm developing this what I think is a new version of running, which I'm sure someone else has thought, thought of it, but I call it hybrid running. Okay. So think of the CrossFit brain and, and all those things. Um, they talk about the pyramid of fitness uh-huh. and you got the nutrition and conditioning, mm-hmm. right? And, and I started thinking about like this, I got this book called Mastery by George Leonard, if you read it, but it is this like a keto instructor. I think it might've been but a doctor too, but he wrote mm-hmm. this book about like, this is how you master something. So like, man, I want to master stuff. Well, it's really hard on CrossFit to master 60 movements. See what I mean? So yeah, like, right. Let's take the most natural form of exercise, running, and, and with that pyramid in mind, how many people really master conditioning? Mm-hmm. And let's take one mode of exercise, right? So technically, I mean, running is complicated. You think lifting, lift, you think lifting, lifting is tough? Right. You're There's right. a lot going on in the run, and I didn't really examine it. And, and right. as a CrossFit coach, like, man, I felt like I'm talking about these 10 things of fitness and aerobic endurance. But, like, I mean, I didn't care about it. Yeah. It was my least one of mine. I mean, I was a sprinter in high school, and sure. I was this kid on my football team, and I loved to sprint. But, like, even over a couple laps around the track, it was dumb. Yeah. You know, why would you do that? Right. And yeah. I felt like, I can't I can't talk to people about this and say it's important not do it. So I said, hey, I'm going to investigate aerobic training, how to develop that energy system. And I started getting, you know, like, read books about it, spent a year doing and challenging myself it took character it took virtue right, like right. say i don't like to do this man dude anyway or this might not be going anywhere but i'm gonna stick with I'm it i'm gonna test it, anyway. it and give it the long right, run and at least right. play with it and and especially getting turned turn 40 soon and think about longevity and, oh, and yeah, they, yeah. there's a lot of aerobic training that 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 helps with that and um so i kind of dove into that world and i, I kept thinking of like and i love doing the events the winter i love the events i'm like mm-hmm. man what would be an event that would like test like who's the best runner you know what I mean? So, like, there's nothing out. Like, but this is what I wanted to do. Like, I got the aerobic and I built that engine, but, like, I love speed. I, like, I, I wanted a test of, like, a sprint and middle distance and a long distance. Mm-hmm. So, a hybrid runner, someone who's, like, confident in all three energy systems. Yeah. Which is what CrossFit preaches. But i never seen anybody do it. I you know, can't like, actually, one, and yeah. ha- actually have a test. Like, if you have a test, you're going to compete. Right. But, like, there isn't, like, a test of, like, all three energy systems. Mm-hmm let alone just just running so like, that would be really cool so my plan is to so i've been doing that myself i've been trying to become a hybrid runner yeah so um i've created a test i do every three months uh, i do a 200 meter sprint a one mile and five mile run okay and it's yeah. like kind of see where i'm at between like, who's the best runner in all those are seem like distance to me but <laughs> that's all we're about to have <laughs> but like you know think of like I'm gonna make any of them and they're not so specialized like a sure. marathon specialized a five mile run like an average person can like do a five mile mm-hmm. run like you right. might not be good at it but like you know, shuffle along, shuffle along right. and, and a 200 meter sprint isn't like a 40 yard dash would be specialized so, like, yeah because there's so many little so many intricate kind of, things I mean, you could do like you could do that you could do all three of those and and uh, and I've always liked the one mile run, like the mm-hmm. Roger Bannister four mile. Like that was dr- run mile run is dramatic. Yeah. I coached track for a while, and I'm like, man, that would be a, a fun thing to train for. Yeah. And uh, and to be a sprinter, like string need strength. You got to yeah. like, develop strength oh, yeah. and some Olympic lifts and some squatting and deadlifts is gonna help you. So my one of my dreams is develop a, a ho- hopefully do it this year, but like an actual competition at a cool. high school track yeah. under the lights. It's like Friday night, 200 meters. And tell you, I they mean that 200 meters is, it's a blast. Like, yeah, like right. Throwing the hammer, not to people knows what that feels like. Yeah. You know I mean, like 200 meter dash, like it's a really, it's you come yeah. around that corner and it's you and these other guys and there's a little bit of grit at the end. Sure. There's a little bit of like, I can just sustain this pain a little bit longer. Mom and dad's in the crowd. Yeah, like, how yeah, cool yeah. would it be to have that for adults? You know what I mean? I'd love right. to come down there. My kids are in the stands. Uh, it could maybe win a heat. <laughs> I think you'd get. I think you'd get a ton of people that would be. I in, think so into too. That. You know, there's a ton of people in here. We've got a guy in here, just an oddball of a character. We call him Miracle Mike, and he's one of those guys that has all those things. He can run for miles. He can sprint. He, can, you know, he's just he's crazy. But uh, I think that would be huge for some. And there's people. nothing else like that, and that they're evenly right. weighted. You know what I mean? So like, okay, you you get. Like the CrossFit Games, okay, you get like first place gets one point, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So like they're t- each event, you Lowest can win one event, wins, and like yeah. lowest score wins, and overall three events, who's the best runner? Yeah, Like absolutely. that'd be kind of a cool sport. 
a new sport of running. So that's I haven't heard of anyone else doing something like that. I've been doing really research. Interested. I tried to look for it myself because yeah. I wanted to do it. So I'm well, you know, the it. other thing is, is you should, like you said, you know, we can run five miles, we can shuffle it up. I, I'm a firm believer that you should be able to run a mile, no matter what sport you're in at any yeah. point. My wife gets me to run our 5K every year just because, and, and the way she does it is by just kind of guilting me into it. And I, I look at myself and go, I'm an athlete. Right, should yeah, be able to run athlete, a 5K. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Any athlete should be able to run a 5K no matter what without training. They might not be good without, at it. Exactly, without, yes. You should be able to do it. And I'm always last, you know, and yeah. I've got old ladies beating me. And, yeah. But you still run it, you know. And Well, I was thinking of this, like this event. I'm like, man, I thought, like, what would be the shortest long distance event? Because a 5K is, yeah. I started researching it. I was like, that's a middle distance event. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's really right. middle distance, but like. I did the research and five miles is like the shortest long distance event. Mm-hmm. Like the aerobic anaerobic balance yeah. becomes more aerobic than a 5K. Right. You know what I mean? So I got up and I'm like, I've never ran more than the 5K in my life. You know what I mean? Like right. this is like four years ago. So I just got up and ran five miles. You know, I just did yeah. it. Like no matter, it wasn't prepared. Yeah. Did it warm up? Nope. <laughs> just right, just like yeah, just go. the watch and go yeah. and like. Man, it was just a different kind of hard. Right. And now I'm like, man, I just feel like I should be better. If I'm really saying I, I want to be a general overall athlete, I should be better at this. So yeah. That's kind of what started that like path towards. I dig it, man. Aerobic system, man. I'd be really interested in see how that how that turns out. I think you'll you'll get some uh, you'll get some definite interest in it because. I think it sounds cool, and I'm not running anywhere for any yeah, reason. Okay, yeah, I think it'd be spectator friendly. You I could definitely kind of like, go and cheer people on. You know, cheer people on, and, uh, and you know, there's just something magic about the high school football track. Under yes, the lights. absolutely. And we know if you remember, we did that event a couple of years ago called the Lift Sprint Run. I sure do. Yep. That was like, man, under the track. It was, man, it was just, and it was cool because it was a Friday night, and there's guys there like, like, dude, I was at work all day, and it was, like, high school football. Yeah. Like, you're sitting there in a study hall, yeah. it's at 1 o'clock, and you're, like, you just, you know, something big's coming in that night. People had that same feeling about this. I wish oh, more people sweet. could feel that, Ugh. that my, it, 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 it really bugged me so bad. My son last year played in, um, like, peewee football, and they let him play under the lights. Yeah. And I didn't like it because <laughs> all those years leading up to, the first time I got to step out on the field as a varsity football player under those lights, it was just like I've been waiting my whole yeah, career right. to do this. Right. And he got to do it as a sixth yeah. grader. And I, I didn't agree with it. I wish they would have let him let him get to that point and work his ass off yeah. to get there, you know. And But uh, it's, a, it's interesting a you say that. though, you know. Because yeah. like, I did that in Westlake. We had a fifth and sixth grade football, and we got to do the championship game under mm-hmm. the lights. And I tell you what, like it was... I got that dose in fifth grade, yeah. and I, I was done. Yeah, I wanted that. Like I wanted to wear the green and white for Westlake. Yeah, get on later, but like man, I was like, that was like the best thing it's ever. It's amazing like, feeling, yeah. man. I went oh, back to so coach so when I was coaching for Amherst for those few years under Keith Grabowski. Oh and yeah, it was so cool. You're back out under the lights, You're man. Coaching, yeah, it's this a, little ass town I'm in, you yeah. know. But it's crazy. That, that, small town football, man. Yeah. Ohio has small town football. It's you it can't beat it's it. Something else, yeah. It's really. Uh, and then your uh, your uh, alma mater is just murdering people, just murking people all over the country. Avon Eagles national televised game hell? last year. And, I mean, Mark, when I played, I mean, there were probably nine or ten seniors on my team. Right. Two traffic lights in town. Yeah. Division six. And it's like just total just other. All right, Mark. So people. when I played as a wide receiver, I was in a three point stance. Uh huh. Like that's yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? We had like three pass plays. Right. And now they're like spread. You know, twenty formations, just yeah, they, deadly, just deadly, deadly program. I think I might be wrong, but I think they painted like the visitor locker room pink. Did they really? <laughs> like, like, the big, Such a picture. <laughs> so, so, so wrong. Man, it's so right. It's the same. <laughs> Gosh, whatever yeah. takes the win, you know. Like God, that's yeah. They're they're something they're else. A program. But, yeah. They're a program. All right. Well, man. This has been fantastic. I uh, really enjoyed this. We have to uh, do this again and not Likewise. wait another uh, four years or something right, to hook right. up again. Um, keep us. I I want to I want to be updated on this. If if you decide to to do this running competition, yeah. I think it sounds fantastic. So I'll let you know. My goal is to do one this year and 
kind of see where it goes. But cool. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to uh, sign off then, and it was great having you on the show, and appreciate you coming out. Likewise. All right. This has been the Refined Savage. See ya. Sweet. God, we went for a long time. Hour and ten minutes, yeah. That was a blast. (laughs) (laughs) Good, you know.